the, the business forced me into real estate in a way because it was just the smart thing to do. I didn't want to be a tenant for the rest of my business career. I wanted to acquire the, the building. And Abishkar, it was the best thing I ever did. Welcome to the Immigrant Doctor Podcast, a podcast for financially focused immigrant physicians and other medical professionals looking to learn investing in the U.S. market and achieving financial freedom. Join Avishkar, the immigrant doctor, as he talks to high achievers and go-getters who unravel their journeys, hardships, and successes, helping you to get your financial freedom. To learn more, go to theimmigrantdoctor.com. Folks, um, some of my guests may actually have, uh, you know, some mentorship programs. They may have some deals that they're working on, and uh, you might get interested in working with them. But uh, please bear in mind that I haven't done any due diligence on what they are offering, um, and you should do your own due diligence before you start working with them. Having said that, you know, these are very high-quality guests that I'm trying to bring on so that they can provide good value to you, and, you know, they're hardworking individuals, and they have uh, integrity when they work, but you should definitely do your own due diligence. Um, I I haven't done that due diligence on um, you know what their programs are, what their deals are. Um, so please do your due diligence. Um, I don't want to be held liable for anything that they are offering, and you join that program or that deal with them uh, because you heard it on my podcast. All right, folks, welcome back to another episode of the Immigrant Doctor Podcast. I have with me Carlos Salguero, and he is an amazing guy. I met recently, actually, um, and I had heard a lot about him on some of the Facebook communities that I'm a part of, and everybody was telling me that you should definitely go and meet Carlos. So what happened was that after my shift uh, one of the days, um, he was actually traveling to Philadelphia for... uh, a property that he was touring. And so I ended up driving there and meeting him for the first time. And I told him my big, bold goal. And then uh, we were like, we're probably going to be in touch. And, you know, like it's very common in real estate circles. You keep bumping into the same same people over and over again. And it so happened that we bumped into uh, into each other in another circle. And I figured I need to get this guy on my show. Um, So, Carlos, uh, why don't we start with your story? I mean, you're, you're... you're a force of nature, man. You've succeed, You've done so much in your life, not just in real estate, uh, you know, in your businesses that you've uh, had success in. You have uh, really achieved a lot of success in a lot of spaces. So let's just start with, you know, what you do and where you started from. Thank you, Abhishekar. I appreciate you having me on. Always a pleasure to connect with you again. And yes, good people run into good people. I'm a big believer in being in the right rooms and just giving yourself the chance of going and meeting other folks that are on your same journey, your same path that you can collaborate with, that you can connect with. So that's how we end up really building our network. And remember this, one relationship can change your life because it will empower you to do things at a much greater level. So thank you for having me on the show. I appreciate you doing this as well because it's getting the word out of the importance of just going to the next level and maybe we empower and we help somebody that is listening to this today to take the next step to achieve success. So I came from Quito, Ecuador, originally, Abishkar. Um, I'm uh, born and raised in South America, in Ecuador. I came to the U.S. at 17 years old. My parents always had the dream of us coming to the U.S. In fact, we went to an American school over there where we learned English, you know, that was a gift that our parents made a lot of sacrifices for. We were not wealthy by any means, you know, I would say lower, lower medium class. Uh, But, you know, my parents really were diligent at investing in our education and making sure we went to a school where we would learn both languages. So that was probably the first thing that, that helped us. And also they, throughout the years, instilled in us the desire of coming to the U.S. because my dad especially believed that the U.S. was the land of opportunity where the American dream was alive, where there was freedoms, where there was chances. And, um, you know, that's what people sometimes don't realize. You know, the countries that we come from, the opportunities are limited. If you were not born in the right family many times, you know, it's almost impossible to go right. to the next level. So uh, here, really, the, the, the concept of free enterprise 
of, of, of you being able to, to focus, work hard and really pursue opportunity is very real. So I came to the U S came to college, you know, I believed that having a degree was important and my parents did too. So I got a couple of them. I got an, uh, uh, an engineering degree, a master's degree, and I got a, a business degree. And then I went and I kind of followed the path that most people follow, which was, let me go get a job. Let me go uh, try corporate for a little right. bit. <laughs> so I went and worked for Hewlett Packard for five years. It was not easy to get in. You know, I, I, I was always one of those where you know, they told me, no, I still looked up for a way of, hey, how do we make this work? Right. How do we make this work? Is, is there right. Is there right. Opportunity? So I started working at HP, even though I already had a master's degree and that undergrad in business, I started working as an intern, uh, unpaid intern, because I just wanted a foot in the door and an opportunity. And I went in there with the idea of, look, I'm going to be the first one in, the last one out. I'm going to take every advance and opportunity to help other people that need help and be of value, right? Be of service. And that worked. Uh, they gave me an engineering role. I climbed through the ranks in those days. Uh, this was in the Silicon Valley. This was in San Jose, California. And in those days, the dot com uh, boom was a reality. A lot of people left to the startups. I kind of liked a little bit more the security of a, of, a, of a bigger corporate company that has been established for many, many years and was already creating lots of revenue. So I think that was a good move because I did get some offers to go to startups, but you know, I just didn't feel ready yet for that. And I'm glad I stayed because sure. back in those days, the dot com bubble popped. And then a lot of these, a lot of right, these startups right. went bankrupt. <laughs> a lot of the people uh, right. out there lost their job. And uh, for me, in the big corporation, uh, what these big corporations typically do is they contract, right? They don't go out of business. They just contract and they start getting rid of some folks. Right. right. And, you know, I, I, I was right. young. I was probably not the highest paid in the company. So they kept me and they started asking me to get rid of some engineers in my group, which was, you know, heartbreaking. Oh, wow. Yeah, that, that was probably one of the things that marked me early on about corporate because I had to fire about 50 engineers that uh, really we didn't have any control over, right? The, the company was not doing as well as it did. Uh, they were protecting themselves, kind of like Google is right now, kind of like Oracle is right now. You know, a lot of these companies are kind of just shedding the, 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 extra, the extra people that they hired during COVID or whatnot. Right. And that was the time there. So I had to fire people that really, uh, was really heartbreaking for me because many of them were twice my age. Many of them, you know, uh, had families, had mortgages, had bills to take care of. And, uh, that lit a fire in me to go start a business on my own. You know, I, my dad was entrepreneurial. My mom was entrepreneurial. So I, I had that, that example and that seed in me. So I started looking for opportunities outside of my job. And I started looking at the internet. I started looking into e-commerce and I became uh, an e-commerce seller. I became an eBay seller, right? Back in those days, eBay was just getting started. It was in its infancy. But I started just posting things online and it started selling. And I started realizing, oh, wow, I can make a little bit of money with this. And little did I know that within, right. within six to nine months, the side gig that I had was already on track to replace my full-time income at Hewlett Packard. So that's how I began the wow. journey of uh, entrepreneurship. Interesting, interesting. And so then, uh, then what happened? I mean, you you were obviously successful with your uh, with your uh, internet company that you had, and I think it was an online online business, like online shipping and stuff, right? I remember you telling us that you had a small unit, where, a small place where you were storing your stuff, and then you expanded in that. So what what changed? Like what what made you kind of move towards real estate where you're now, the space that you're operating yeah, now. This was, a, this was an overnight success, right? A 15-year journey, overnight success. <laughs> a lot of people think that it happened <laughs> <laughs> overnight. Exactly. But, you know, uh, I, I continue to grow my online business. Uh, I, I started learning how to do it. Back in those days, there was nothing like today where we have all those resources, all the YouTube channels, all the mentorships. On his conferences, right back in those days, man, I was I was trying to find somebody that knew what they were doing online, and there was none. So I had to make a lot of mistakes. Right. Grew the online business, uh, moved back to Colorado because the cost of living was a lot cheaper in Colorado versus California, and then I started renting warehouses. 
And I started realizing right. from the tenant side what a triple net lease was, right? What a commercial lease was. Oh, and, I and, see. And, okay. And, Interesting. And so I was the recipient of a triple net commercial lease. And I was like, hmm, I wonder what it is to be on the other side of this. And because I had the business <laughs> need, <laughs> I had the <laughs> business need of needing space for my inventory, I started looking to buy a warehouse. And within a few years, I started looking seriously and I ended up buying a 50,000 square feet commercial building 12 years ago, which, you know, became the home of my e-commerce business uh, in that big building because it was way bigger than I needed. I was in a 10,000 square feet and moved into a 50,000 in the, in the journey of me oh. stretching myself because it was a big stretch, right? Back in those days, man, buying a 50,000 square feet yeah. building was like, oh my God, this is the biggest thing I've ever done. But you know what? It was good that I stretched myself and I went bigger because I had all this space. So I started thinking, how do I get this place to pay for itself? In any business that I that I'm that I get into, I always think, how do I get this to pay for itself, to fund itself? Especially real estate, right? We we investors in real estate, we right. want the real estate to be paid by our tenants. So in my case, it's like, how do I exactly. have this pay for itself? So I started thinking, oh, you know what? Uh, maybe there's people out there that need space. And in the conferences that I was attending, now I started going to conferences for e-commerce. I started asking, hey, do you need storage? Do you need inventory services? Do you need fulfillment? And I found a, a handful of guys that also had an e-commerce business that needed to store their inventory. And I started offering fulfillment services. And that's how my logistics company was born. Out of me thinking, hey, how do I get a free warehouse, right? How do I get somebody else to pay for this mortgage, to pay for this maintenance? And I started charging inventory by the cubic foot. So I was now renting my warehouse to third wow. parties and charging them by the cubic foot by storing their pallets, their boxes in the warehouse. So that's kind of how I started getting into real estate. And then I thought, okay, what else can I do in real mm -hmm. estate? that is related to me buying an asset and then having somebody else that needs that space to start paying for it, right? So that was kind of, the, the right, business right. forced me into real estate in a way because it was just the smart thing to do. I didn't want to be a tenant for the rest of my business career. I wanted to acquire the, the building and Abishkar, it was the best thing I ever did. That building that I bought 12 years ago, I still own it. I bought it for eight hundred and ten thousand dollars back then. It was fifty thousand square feet and wow. four acres. Right? <laughs> that's not real today. Well, wow. that's kind of a testimony of, yeah. of of you should never wait to buy real estate. You know what I mean? It's always going to be more valuable in the right, future. Right. Now that that same, you need to buy real estate and wait, not wait to buy real estate. One hundred percent. A lot of people are waiting for the perfect, perfect, perfect time. There's never a perfect, perfect time. The perfect time is right now. Right. As long as the well, the perfect, the best, you know, as they say, the best time was yesterday. The next best time exactly. is today. Exactly. And yesterday is always gone. So you can't, you can't do it. Now exactly. the same building has appreciated nine times what I paid for it. And all I've done is so, occupied with so, my business and maintain it. Right. I haven't done any major renovations. I haven't done anything other than the initial ones to, to, to put my business in it. So. That started my journey in real estate. And over the years, I've been buying real estate, single families. I did Airbnbs. So I've tried almost every asset class uh, that, are, that there is. And, and you know, when I, when I kept building my, my businesses, my e-commerce business, my logistics business, my marketing business, eventually I started a supplement brand out of this same location. And that supplement brand took off like crazy during COVID. And I had an opportunity to sell it to a private equity group. And that was my first company exit, which now put me in a situation where I'm like, you know what, what do I do with this liquidity? I need to put it to work. Exactly. Right? It created a little bit of worry and anxiety in the sense that I didn't know exactly how to put this money to work. And I didn't want... I, I just want to point something out because, you know, you mentioned that you didn't know what to do with that money and you needed to put it to work. I think that's a very important mindset to have, you know, when you're getting into anything or you want to be successful, especially financially in your life, because 
uh, you can you could have easily blown up that money, right? You could have there are ten thousand things you could have bought. You could have gone and bought a fancy car. You could have gone and bought a fancy house. But your thought was, hey, how do I put this money to work so that this money makes me more yes. money? And that's a very important concept to understand. So true, so true. And and you know, I, I we've always been frugal. We've always lived below our means. But you know, as 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 our income has grown, and we've been upgraded our lifestyle. It's always still been very modest. Like, like I'm not into fancy cars. I'm not into right. fancy watches. I'm not into luxuries. I love, I love, I love travel. I love to take my family to nice places. I love those things. But you know, at, at the heart of all this is like, you know, I've I've been giving this great opportunity to create some money out of the sale of this company. How do I? How do I now invest it wisely? And my priorities were: How do I protect it? Right, so that so that the downside is minimal. Right. Number two, how do I make sure that it's appreciating over time? And number three, right. how do I make sure that it's cash flowing for me? Right, that I'm creating some sort of a cash flow situation. And number four, which was the biggest thing that most of us higher higher earners face, is can I create some tax opportunities? Out of these investments, right? <laughs> <laughs> I know that's a recurring theme, right? Yes. Everybody wants to save on taxes. That's the most expensive thing that I do in my life is pay taxes right now. <laughs> every, every single uh, high earner is number your number one expense is taxes. Yet all of us, if not ninety nine percent of people, kind of avoid the subject. We don't even want to think about it, right? It's 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 right, kind of like right, oh, right, you know right, what? Exactly. We don't think about it until April rolls around, or 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 the end of March. Exactly. When, when exactly. we have to dreadedly exactly. go into it and, 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 and give our CPA the stuff that they need to file. And then, exactly. and then when we look at it, I was like, oh man, it's it hasn't been a priority all year long because, you know, we've been just seeing that money go, go, go. go, go. <laughs> but then we're like, oh, shoot. And I, and I think it changes, right? What, when you're in real estate, it changes because uh, you're sort of excited. Okay, how much of a tax break am I getting this year? <laughs> So it, it kind of changes from being, you know, dreading how much am I going to lose this year in taxes to how much am I saving this year? How much is the IRS giving me back this year right. in taxes? Right. And that's the fun part of it. You know, you 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 become efficient. You become tax efficient. Exactly. Uh, mo- most folks don't understand that. It's like you know, you you're working so hard to create revenue and income, and but but yet you have this big looming leak in your in your net worth which is all the taxes that go away so by you not only focusing on still making money but keeping some of that money by making the wise investment exactly. in real estate then you know you become you become a, a a machine that fires on all cylinders so now you're making money now you're protecting your 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 tax situation you're becoming more efficient so then you can multiply wealth a lot quicker than if you're just growing on your income side and protecting your expenses. Right, right. Now, Carlos, you know, um, I, I certainly faced this, uh, this you know, mindset when I came to this country because this country uses a lot of debt to grow. Did you have ever have challenges with that, like you know, using debt to grow? And did you, did your parents ever say that, oh, you should never be in debt and that's the bad thing to do or the wrong thing to do? And how did you go about, you know, changing that mindset? I'm so glad you asked this question because, you know, for me, I acquired a lot of good habits from my parents. They were super hard workers. They were persistent, determined. You know, they, they, my dad was extremely poor growing up. So he kind of picked himself up from absolute poverty to, you know, being a small business owner and medium class and, and having some means. But one of the things that I picked up from them, just like probably you said that debt was evil, right? And it was a very right. is a very black and white statement. Like there was no gray in between. Right. It's like don't get in debt. Don't get in debt. It's kind of like the debt ra- the the Dave Ramsey philosophy, right? It's like don't get in debt. Exactly. But, exactly. But then over the years, when I started understanding that there's two types of debt. There's good debt and there's bad debt. And most people only think that debt is bad. Right. The 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 bad debt is the debt that you pay yourself. The exactly. good debt is the debt that other people pay for you, right? 
that's how clear it is. When you exactly. can get yourself in a situation where the debt, the loan is being paid by others, then what that debt is doing is allowing you to leverage and grow. And that's what we do in real estate, in commercial real estate, especially. Exactly. When we go out and buy a building, an apartment complex, a mixed use luxury community, for example, like the one we have under contract right now, somebody else is paying for that debt. Yeah. I'm taking the debt on the property. Number one is non-recourse debt. So it, it sits on the business, right? not on me personally. But the second thing is the tenants, both residential and commercial, are paying for that debt every single month. And it's it's interesting right. what happens too, Avishkar, is like the bank won't even give you the loan if the business can support the loan and pay for it, right? Right, because that's we true. have this debt coverage ratio yep. that unless the debt coverage ratio is over a certain threshold, it used to be 1.25. Now it's like 1.45 because of where interest rates are at. Or, yeah. But it's almost like unless the income of the business can cover over 25 to 50% of these loan payment, they don't want to even give you the loan. So it's, it's, it's very yeah. safe. Exactly. Right? It's very safe. That's true. And I and I think uh, I just want to point out to our listeners, uh, Carlos, that, you know, some of these terms like debt coverage ratio, cash flow, um, cash on cash, um, these can be very confusing for uh, the, you know, somebody who's just starting on real estate. So folks, I have a free course, a free video course on my website, theimmigrantdoctor.com. You can go there and download it. It's not an extensive course on real estate, it kind of gives you a, a very high level view of what real estate actually is and, you know, understanding some of these terms that we're talking about over here. So head on to www.theimmigrantdoctor.com and you can download this free course and uh, see if, you know, real estate would be a good fit for you. Uh, one thing I want to point out, Carlos, and uh, before I forget this, that you had mentioned was to look for cash flow because what ends up happening, and, and that was a mindset that I came came with was uh, it's real just about appreciation. But I think uh, it's important to understand that the appreciation of a property doesn't necessarily pay your bills. It's the cash flow that pays your bills. It's the daily, it's the monthly drip that you're getting from the property that pays your bills. You know, say you buy a house. Um, I hear a lot of people saying, oh, the market is going down. My, my, my you know, I bought this house. Now it's, it's gone down in value. I'm like, you're still living there. You're, you know, you're paying the same amount of mortgage. Are you selling it today? So it doesn't matter what the value is today because that's not paying your bills. That's not, that, that is, that is of limited value to you because unless you plan to sell it right now and take that money and do something with it, it's of very limited value. Yes. So true. Look, cash flow has to be king in your investments, right? You have to have some money after you pay all expenses, your incomes, your expenses, including your debt. You have to have some cash flow because that's what's going to keep you going over time and every single investment right. that we make in an asset in our case real estate because that's what we're talking about here it has to produce cash flow right off the bat and sometimes people don't understand that and exactly. i respect people that invest in land i invest people that invest in uh, new developments or construction and all that stuff man those, those guys those guys my hat's off because they're risk takers right these, these things are risky. Right. Construction yeah. is risky. Development is risky. I'm pretty risk adverse, meaning that when I look at an investment in a property, if the property doesn't cash flow right now, I don't buy it. I go on to the next deal. Right. Until I find a deal that I can walk into already positive cash flow. And then I can increase right. the incomes, create more and more cash flow, optimize the expenses, create more cash flow. And therefore, as you know, Avishkar, we force the value of the property and we increase the value right. of the real estate. That's true. Um, and, uh, you know, Carlos, I want to, I, I, the reason why I actually got you on, because, I, you know, you're a big proponent as I am of being in the right rooms. I just want to kind of understand how your journey changed as you changed your circles through your journey in the last 15, 20 years. Look, this is another thing that uh, I didn't understand, right? Uh, so I told you a little bit about I had to kind of uh, unlearn some habits that I picked up from my parents, like the debt thing, right? I had to start looking at the, the the real 
the real uh, value of that. Number two was I never saw my dad get a partner. I never saw my dad really actively going to conferences, networking with people, connecting with others. Like, you know, he did so for his business and met clients and met mentors and stuff like that, but never other people that were in his same industry. He always looked at others as competitors. And I think that's a mindset that limited his growth. He never saw other people as collaborators, like you and I collaborating today, right? So uh, right. as as I grew up in my business, I had to start understanding, oh, you know what? I need to start going to places, uh, meetings, conferences, meetups, where I can meet other people that are in the same business, that are achieving success, where maybe we can create some collaboration, learn from each other, uh, go and be with people that are smarter, more successful, because that is the biggest shortcut that you can ever create. You get into the right room, you meet people right. that have achieved success, you meet people that have struggled with things and have overcome challenges. And instead of you having to go overcome yourself, you can be humble enough and say, hey, Abishkar, I know you've gone through this situation. How did you do it? Could you give me some feedback because I'm going through this? And that collaboration is magic, man because it allows you to skip the line and really move your That's business true. forward without you having to invest the time, effort, energy, and money that many times it takes for us to learn from a mistake that we are making at a certain point in time. So getting in the right rooms, so critical because you meet the right people, network with the right people. You might meet your next mentor, you might meet your next investor, your next partner, you know, you you really can create big big momentum by being in the right in the right rooms. Yeah, and I think you know you mentioned that it's not about competition but about collaboration because I think when we collaborate, we can do larger things, bigger things, and then everybody wins uh, rather than competing because then you remain at a small level. And uh, I just want to kind of speak to that because um, um, I know that you were in the space where you were initially uh, investing in smaller assets yeah. and now you suddenly transition to bigger assets. So I want to speak to that and kind of let you talk about what changed and what made you kind of go to bigger assets all of a sudden, like, you know, from going from a single family, investing in single family homes to going in investing in apartment building. Yeah, that's a great question. Look, I think one of the big things is understanding how to scale. One of the biggest things in business is scalability. How can you scale so that you can eventually work yourself out of the business? Right? Because because otherwise, if you have a business that requires all your time, all your energy, then it becomes just another job. And that's this thing that we're trying to all escape from as entrepreneurs. We want freedom. Exactly. At the end of the day, we want freedom. So for me, the smaller properties was a great start because it, it kind of got me a taste of real estate in the management side. But I found myself working on the business, in, in the business, I should say, instead of on the business. So for me, there's really two main reasons of moving to bigger real estate. Number one, I wanted to be more on the strategic side of things, on the growth side of things. And if I found myself managing the properties more than growing the portfolio, then I was, right. I was, it was compromising a lot of precious time of me growing the real estate portfolio. And number two was risk. The less number of units that you're handling. So let's say I have a fourplex and two tenants leave. Right. That's 50% of my income out right. the window where I now have to go replace 50% of my income. In a hundred unit deal, if even 10 tenants decide to not renew or leave, that's only 10% of my income that is going out the window. So there, there's less risk on bigger properties because now you're protected by multiple streams of income. Now you have every single one of those tenants right. becomes a stream of income that you can protect. And that's on the downside. On the upside, the same thing. If I am able to increase the rent in a hundred unit deal by a hundred bucks, we're talking millions of dollars of value add also because of the right. scalability. Exactly. So one of the biggest things that I learned and you probably heard this is the multiple 
most important in yeah. real estate is the yeah. number of units. I wanted to get this epiphany because, you know, a lot of times, um, at least when I started, I can say this for sure. My initial instinct was I want to own 100% of what I what I own. I don't yeah. want anybody else to partner with me. And how, how did that, you know, being with, being around other people, how did that change for you? Yeah, I think I think that's a big one too. That's that's again a limiting belief because it goes back to the to the I have I don't want any partners, right? Because maybe you got burnt once, maybe you hurt somebody getting burnt by a partnership. In my case, the Vishkar, I never saw my dad have any partners. So how how would I have any partners? In my hero, my dad never had any partners. So I had to kind of start, you know, reformatting my 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 drive about that and how I could scale to a bigger level. So I think the epiphany came when I started to understand the the growth potential, right? Can I bring the value of a property so much bigger? And understanding that, look, maybe I could do this on my own, but eventually I'm going to be limited by my cash, right? If I don't have all the capital right. to go buy this 100-unit deal, is it a deal breaker? And I'm never going to achieve it until I... I amass enough capital to go buy this 100 unit deal. So, and if you think about it, how the biggest companies in the world have grown, it has never been self funded. Like nobody self funds a public corporation, nobody self funds a big enterprise. It always has to grow from the small enterprise, the garage thing, to when the founder, the owner, grabs and finds the best people to partner with and eventually creates an opportunity for investors, for other people to put their money to work with you so that you can grow and scale the business. So I had to go from the absolutely no partners, I don't want to be partnering with anybody because I might get burnt, to, oh, <laughs> you know what? I think I want to I wanna learn how to scale. I want to learn how to do it because other people have done it successfully. So if other people have done it successfully, right, right. why can't I do it successfully and learn all the all that is needed to master this? Yep, and I think it's about you know not reinventing the wheel, the wheel, but learning from people who are already in this uh, in this journey or who are further ahead of you. A lot of times, you just need somebody who's like one step ahead of you to uh, to guide you and to mentor you to take you to that level. Um, and I think that's what you did. You were in the right rooms with the right people, understanding what they have done to scale successfully so that you could achieve your financial goals uh, with whatever you were doing. So true. Look, I think that that um, you're not going to hit it off with it, with everybody, okay? It's that's, that's very important that you understand that there's always going to be different folks, uh, different connections. I think you and I connected because we're both immigrants. You know, we're both kind of come from from similar right. backgrounds, and I think that that's that's a big thing. But as as you do find the right folks, you you have to learn like like you you have to find the, the who, right? Who is going to help me achieve this next goal? Who is going to help me go to the next level? And and I think that's the important thing. Sometimes we think too much about the how. And there's an amazing book that everybody should read. It's called right. Uh, who, not how, right? Because we're always programmed, even even in in school. Right. It's like, how do I do this, right? How do I how do I how do I accomplish this? Right. How do I create uh, the the next level of my journey? Because we're we're asking of ourselves all the answers, and the reality is that we not always have all the answers. We need to go ask. Like you're a doctor, and you're probably a specialist at a specific right. thing, or maybe right. a generalist. But if you have a, a challenge that right. requires uh, something that is specialized, you go ask the specialist, right? If, if it's a problem with, 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 exactly. with the heart, mm -hmm. you go ask a cardiologist. If it's a problem with any other area of the body, you go ask that person that has studied that subject and become an, an expert and a master. So for us entrepreneurs, it has to be the same way. We got to go find who has the right. knowledge that is going to help me get to the next level and be humble enough to say, you know what, this is an area where I don't have a lot of expertise, but I'm willing to go find the person that does so that now I can collaborate, partner, 
and go to that next level with them. That's really it. Right. Yeah, I think it's very important to partner and uh, I think you've done it the right way. And uh, just talking numbers, I just want to kind of give a sense to people of what changed, how the numbers for you changed in terms of uh, the number of doors or the number of units that you have when you were not partnering and you were doing your own small thing versus now when you're partnering and you're doing bigger things. For sure. So if you can just uh, give an overview of what's been going on in your life. Yeah, look, the same journey. Uh, when I was still doing this as a hobby, you know, at any given time, I had sent seven to 10 units, right? Because I sold some, uh, I kept some. And then within about a year's time, I went and created a portfolio of over 1,200 units right now. So from seven units, really, which I consider almost zero, right? For some people, that's a lot, but but you know, for me, it's like, like <laughs> look, I, I, I need to I need to scale this business. To me, investing in deals as a limited partner first, which is a passive investor first, to learn that side of things, and then to learn how to be a sponsor, how to be a general partner, and me now being the manager of deals. So all in all, it's been a, an amazing growth. Uh, to 1,200 units now, and you know we're we're on track to close another 138 units with eight commercial units here very shortly. So you know it's still growing, and mm. this year, same thing. You know I want to continue to 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 build this, to grow this, because I I think once once you understand how to do it repeatedly, that's really what success is, right? When you can win repeatedly, and it really? not always goes perfect. But as long as you get better every day, you can continue to do great things and bring great people like yourself along. Yeah, and I think it's, uh, you know, it's, I want to just uh, uh, clarify a few things for people. Even though, you know, you you're, you have acquired 1,200 units, it's been in a partnership and that's yes. so essential. And that part of it, you would have never understood or learned if you were not in those rooms which were talking about this, right? So it's about being around people who are already doing what you want to do and understanding what they're doing and maybe collaborate, collaborating with some people over there who you jive with and have fun with. So true. So true. And, and, and really understanding, oh, you know, this is how they did it. This is how they, they created the success. And uh, be, willing, right. be willing to step out in the uncomfortable, maybe not knowing everything. And, and, and I'm thinking that, that for doctors, that's, that's pretty challenging sometimes, right? Because because you're kind of you're always the expert, yeah. right? You, you 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 patients look at you as like doctor. <laughs> tell me what to do to to fix this, and 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 I'm sure that you kind of having to be yourself now in a position where like you know what I'm just getting this thing started. I'm just learning about these these investments, uh, learning this real estate thing. It it creates a lot of discomfort for people that for the longest time have been the authority to so many others, right? So I think right. I think that that cre- that you know, I, I always say this, man. I'm always a student, right? No matter how much I learn, no much no matter how much success I create. Yeah, I think so like, too. Like look, I, I still need to be a student. There's somebody else that has more knowledge than me. There's somebody else that has more success than me. There's somebody else that has done this before repeatedly. I I still need to be coached to go to the next level. And at the same time, I need to pay it forward, but maybe helping some people right. that uh, are are on the come up. Right. 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 And, um, you know, uh, Carlos, one thing, uh, one thing that I want to talk about is also the fact that at least I also face this dilemma initially, which I, I, you know, which my mindset has changed about now, is that when you go to these places, like a lot of, for example, going with going for a mentorship or going for somebody's program, right? They're very expensive at times. And um, they can be a challenge. They can be a barrier to kind of get into those mentorships. And, um, you know, when I came into the space of real estate, I my, again, my con- my idea behind this was, what is this guy going to teach me that's like, that I cannot already learn? But I think when you change that concept from what to who this person is, and how I can, how he can help me with his, with his network of people, to kind of grow ten times, a hundred times. Will my money invested? Will that be worth it or not? 
and that creates a shift of you know uh, our mindset because look knowledge you can get from books i can get all the knowledge that i want about real estate yep. from books i don't need to go spend thousands of dollars on anything but i think it comes to more of who you're networking with where you're meeting people uh, wh- what are your thoughts did you have any of these barriers going in or uh, how did you overcome those if you did all kinds of barriers man uh, because i think i think another big limiting belief when we are growing up in our countries is that it's only about the school system right you learn stuff in school in university and that's it right after you're done with your university your degrees maybe you take a course of two from another university but that's it so this concept of investing in yourself by going to a conference or paying for a mastermind paying for for a mentorship something like that is like so foreign to most people because we've never even talked about it right our parents had no idea in fact your parents probably will be alarmed at the amount of money that you and i have invested in our (laughs) self-growth in the last in the last few years yeah because they say man you could could probably buy a couple a couple houses with with those money right (laughs) so for me also i had to unlearn certain certain things but Look, I can tell you, when I started investing in myself back in my e-commerce days and going to these conferences and traveling and meeting people, my business took off like a rocket because I no longer felt limited where I was. Like by myself, I hit a ceiling, an invisible ceiling, which was my level of knowledge and my level of activity. When I started going to these rooms with people that were more successful, Then it became real to me. I was like, oh, Joe is selling so much more, is achieving so much more revenue now. And Joe seems just like a normal guy like me. So it created this abundance thinking in my mind. It's like, look, if Joe can do it, I can sure go do it. Let me me try to see what Joe did and connect the dots so I can copy his success. And even that, when I say that, even that, I still kind of feel like, I'm cheating somehow because again, our school system, our education system does not promote collaboration, does not promote you and I sitting at a table and say, hey, Abishkar, this is how we're going to take over this project and we're going to help each other. We're going to copy our notes. You're good at this. I'm good at that. Let's tackle it together. In fact, you know, my kids to this day, I have twins. It's like them working on their homeworks together it's, it's cheating for some reason instead of teamwork when it should be like, hey, yeah, <laughs> work together. Solve the problem right. together. Don't do it by yourself. Work together. So as you go to these conferences and these events, you see people that are doing things right. Guys, it's okay to copy success. It's actually the fastest way to it. You don't have to reinvent the wheel. You don't have to do it all over again. Just find the right. people that have done it in that have what you want and just mimic and apply and take action on that so that you can grow faster and win. Right. No, I think that's, those are very wise words. Um, so Carlos, I know that you have a, you have a mentorship program and, uh, you know, I'm sure that some people will be interested in, in joining you in one way or the other. How can they find you? Look, they can find me all over the internet. I'm on every social media platform, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube. I am Carlos Tenex. Carlos Salguero is my name. They can find me on my website. I'm carlostenex.com. And, um, you know, what I've tried to do really, I, I think one of the biggest forms of giving back is to che- teach what you what you learn. But just like you are teaching doctors how to start on their investing mm-hmm. journey, you know, I'm teaching anybody that wants to learn how to invest in commercial real estate, multifamily real estate, how to do it properly, how to do it right, how to take the right actions, how to not get burned, how to uh, get into partnerships, how to pick the right staff, how to find the right team so that you can build something that is sustainable over the long term and that it does not it yeah. does not consume your life. You know, one of my biggest goals for the rest of my life is Look, I want to I want to eventually have businesses that run itself. That 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 run with without me. That doesn't mean that I stop working. That just means that I have the option now to work whenever I want. 
and I love working. I love producing. I love creating, right? It's, 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 it's a passion of mine. But as the businesses grow, that you have this opportunity of investing, of creating wealth through real estate. And that's what I teach in the mentorship, right? Hey, look, you're going to go find yourself properties that will run themselves. Yeah, you're going to be active at a certain point, but eventually, right. you know, once your business is established, you have the option to step back in that cash flow, that passive income continues to come not only throughout your lifetime, but you can create generational wealth that will outlive you, pass on to your kids, your grandkids, and whoever else you want to pass it on to. And and really, that's where legacies are created, not only of, of wealth, but also knowledge. And I think you and I teach because we want the knowledge not to die in us, but to go multiply itself in other people that maybe even will become bigger investors than we are, right? Maybe, maybe, maybe. Right. The, 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 and we get a we get a chance to collaborate yeah, with them, exactly, right? <laughs> exactly. Maybe, maybe the next Michael Jordan of real estate investing uh, will be our student at some point, right? Well, you never know. I, I've done deals with my students already, right? I bought properties with my students. I bought a forty-unit property in 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 one of my mentorships with some of my students that actually went and found it. It was a great deal, and and you know. They, they couldn't do it by themselves. That's kind of what I love too, is like, look, they have all the knowledge how to do it, right. but unless they have a partner that is qualified, that knows how to bring in the capital and, and create the opportunity, they can't do it by themselves. So in a way, it's helping people help themselves by not only learning the knowledge, but taking right. action on the knowledge and actually getting results, which is what matters in the end, right? Results is what matters in the end. In business. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, that is true. Uh, I, you know, that's that's why I created this space so that people get exposed to the world of real estate and the world of you know sort of investing, so that they can they can invest and be able to enjoy their lives eventually um, and create this long generation of you know passive income, passive wealth, and even generational wealth, um, so that they they get time to do what they want to do and not necessarily working because they have to work and to to make ends meet. And I, you know, it was so great to have you and you know have this discussion with you uh, about what you've done and how you've kind of transitioned from you know initially you were working in your business and you had to go in and make sure that the business was working to now where you're in real estate where now you have passive income coming in you're still working the working hasn't changed but you're working on your own right. terms it's freedom because now you choose and also it's completely a different level of you creating, giving opportunity, right? That's that's really the evolution right. of it is like where you're right. working for yourself, by yourself, and, and just really almost in, a, in, in your own island to now what I see in front of me is, it, look, you and I, Avishkar, when we go find an, an amazing real estate deal, we create opportunity for others. We create opportunity for partners, to come and work with us. We create opportunity for investors to put their money to work. We create opportunity for team members to be part of any yep. level in the organization. And then we create opportunity through our mentorship and education programs for other people to do the same and and really multiply what's being happening. Right. So, That's you true. know, to me, it's a gift. I, I, I'm, I'm every day grateful that I even get a chance to do this in this great country and that we can move ahead and for the next people that come behind us, we can be examples. And I think that's why you're doing this because you want to create that platform for people to say, oh man, if these guys did it, then I can too. And maybe they can do it faster, quicker, more yeah. efficient without some of the pains that we've had to go through, right? Exactly. Well, thank you so much for coming on, Carlos. This was so much fun to you know have you and have this chit chat with you it was amazing thank you so much thank you so much Avishkar appreciate you man great success to you and your family thank you for tuning in to this episode of the Immigrant Doctor Podcast if you would like to learn more head to www.theimmigrantdoctor.com see you again soon on another episode and another amazing journey